Hi everyone, Marie here. In today's historical sampler company video, we'll finish a decorative cross stitch hoop together. We will need a finished cross stitch. This is our January cotton and twine collaboration box with Stitcherovia. Then we'll need an ironing board and an iron. I have a wool mat here and a quilt bear mini quilting iron, but any iron and ironing board will do. I have used an acid-free mount board for the backing cutout, a pencil to draw on it, a washi tape for the outer hoop, Liberty fabric for the backing, some felt, plain embroidery fabric, fabric scissors and all-purpose scissors, and a sewing needle and thread. I've also used Eileen's tacky glue and stick and spray for fabric. We have linked all of these in the description below in case you need it. Let's get started. First, let's iron the project. I do wash my project, but only if they're visibly dirty or very scrunched. This was clean and very easy to iron, so we're using just an iron this time. When ironing Ada, don't go from side to side, but press on the creases. Rough movements could distort the fabric, so pressing on the fabric instead will give you great results safely. You can also do a gentle press from the front. Again, because you're only pressing, the stitches won't get distorted. Next, let's prepare the hoop for the finishing. I like using my favorite inner hoop hack to prevent the fabric from going loose in the hoop. I've cut off a long strip of plain thin fabric. You don't want it to become too bulky because your hoop wouldn't close on the top and I'm using it to wrap it around the inner hoop. This creates a friction and prevents the ADA from getting loose in the hoop over time. When I finish the wrapping, I'm just making a couple of sewing stitches with a sharp needle and a firm sewing thread to make sure this does not unravel. Once I have it wrapped, we can use it to help us cut out the backing board. Just place the inner hoop on the board, trace around the inner circumference and cut the traced oval or circle out. Set it aside, we'll need this later. Now onto the outer hoop. The absolute easiest way to jazz up an outer hoop is to use some washi tape and wrap it around the hoop. The good thing about washi tapes is that the glue is just enough to hold on to it reliably, but it's super easy to remove in case you change your mind later. There are hundreds of different designs out there, so you can really experiment with the colors and patterns to help accentuate your project. Now that's done, let's put the stitched project back into the hoop. Make sure it's nice and tight and also well centered. We'll be gluing it in soon, which is pretty much an irreversible process. So check the front frequently to make sure you are happy with it. Once it's firmly in place, cut off the excess fabric about an inch from the hoop. Then cut small cuts into the fabric. This is to help us fold it around the inner hoop and prevent any puckering of the fabric. To fix the project into place, take Aileen's tacky glue and squeeze it onto the inner hoop. Then start folding the fabric onto it. I find that working in parts rather than gluing all around the whole hoop in one go works really well for me. As you're folding the fabric in, add glue where needed to make sure the fabric stays in place. However, make sure that the glue doesn't spill over onto the stitched project. It dries clear, but excessive amounts could still be visible from the front. It's time to make the last step, the backing of the hoop. Before you start this step, please try to insert the cutout on the back of the hoop again. It's now smaller because of the folded Ada fabric, so you will need to make the backing board a tad smaller by cutting it here and there as needed. Once done, let's create the decorative backing board. First, iron your backing fabric to get rid of any creases. Then, 
Take the backing board and trace about an inch or half an inch around it and cut the fabric. Take the stick and spray fabric spray and spray it on the board. You really want to do this outdoors or somewhere where you can make sure you won't breathe in the fumes. Also, sticky spray is really sticky and can be messy, so I would really recommend spraying it outdoors somewhere. Once sprayed, make sure the layer is thin but covers the whole area of the board. Place the glued side of the board on the wrong side of the perfectly ironed backing fabric. To make sure there aren't any creases, take your iron, no steam, and gently and quickly iron the glued on fabric. Don't leave the iron on the backing board for too long, otherwise it will warp and misshape. Go quickly from side to side to help the glue set without overheating the board. Finish this step by gluing around the backing board and folding the excess fabric onto the glue to fix it in place. Add glue where needed, but be careful of not using too much. The very last step of the backing board is to spray the fabric glue on the plain side of the backing board and place it onto a piece of white felt. Press it together and cut off the excess felt. It's time to assemble everything together. Take the hoop and push the backing board in place, white felt side first. We are using a neutral colored felt so that there is no discoloration visible on the front of the hoop. The backing board blocks light from shining through the stitching fabric and showing any rogue threads. And there you have it, your very own decorative cross stitch hoop, ready to be displayed or given to your stitchy bestie. Thank you for spending your stitchy time with me. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please remember to hit like and subscribe. And if you're after a stitchy community, why not join our 21,000 member strong historical sampler Facebook group and share your own stitchy finishes with us. Link to join is in the description below. Have a great day and happy stitching!